Mr. Nance, I'm, I'm showing you something that I downloaded from the website of the Commission on Water Resource Management. It identifies aquifers on this island, and I believe the commissioners now have copies. Could you please identify the aquifer from, from which Pi'ilani Partners proposes to draw water and explain how that aquifer was formed? The boundary on that thing between the Hilo aquifer and the Onomea aquifer is the surface contact between those two lavas. And Mauna, Mauna Kea being the older mountain, lavas come down like that. The Mauna Loa lavas being came across and banked against it. And the boundary between the Hilo, Hilo aquifer and the Onomea aquifer is that surface contact. Depending on where you are, if you're down near the shoreline, it's 10 foot elevation. If you go up the saddle road to the saddle road, well, A, which I'll discuss sub subsequently, this surface contact actually has nothing to do with what's happening in the groundwater at depth. It was a convenient way to draw a line when you didn't have the information that goes into that. But you can drill a well here that taps into the Mauna Kea lavas <coughs> and the State Water Commission, because it's on this side of the line, will call it in the Hilo aquifer and they will count the amount of water taken out of these Mauna Kea lavas as having been extracted from the Hilo aquifer, even though the Hilo aquifer typically is the Mauna Loa lavas and the Onomea aquifer is the Mauna Kea lavas. So, if I talk about how this thing, the details I'm going to details I'm going to give you now are based on the two deep boreholes that were done '93 and '99 by the Hawaii Scientific Drilling Project. One of them, the 1993 well, which then about 3,000 feet, was close to was close to where the Hilo breakwater comes into land, and the second one in 1999 that went to more than 10,000 foot depth was in an abandoned quarry site in the Hilo airport. But at the site where we're going to drill the well, subject to your approval, ground elevation is about 14 feet. When we drill down, we're drilling into Mauna Loa lavas, which cover the area that we're drilling in. There may be a zone in here that has calcium carbonate, old reef formation. It did show up in the more Makai of those two deep water wells and did not show up in the, uh, in the, uh, in the one that's in the quarry in the airport. Down at about 800, 900, 1,000 feet, we're going to run into a soil layer that is definitely the weathered surface of the Mauna Kea lavas at depth. So this is all Mauna Loa to this depth, and below here is all Mauna Kea. <clears throat> this soil layer, which is compressed by all of the weight, 800, 900, 1,000 foot of lavas, is basically impermeable. And below that is fresh water under artesian pressure and capped, confined by this layer here. If we go down further, the freshwater body probably extends <coughs> 300 or 400 feet thick. That's what we'll be extracting from. Below that, is salt water. The important point in getting this thing to yield is that far below that is a transition between what are known as submarine lavas. Those are lavas that were laid down below sea level during the shield building stage of the island. And that's at about 3,500 foot depth. The lavas in here are what are called subaerial. They were laid down above the ocean surface and now have sunk all the way down. 
The island, in fact, is sinking at around 0.1 inch per year or so. And to have sunk to this 3,500 foot depth would be uh, sinking at that rate for 400 or 500,000 years. The characteristics of this groundwater that we want to tap. First off, because it's under pressure and at this time, <coughs> fresh water, the, the salt water that's below it is about 2.5% uh, greater density than the fresh water. So when we drill down, we drill through here, that fresh water is going to come up the hole. It may come up all the way, all the way up. Or, phone, oh, sorry. Or it may dissipate into the Mauna Loa lavas, depending on what their permeability is. So during the drilling process, this fresh water is, is coming into the formation or possibly coming above ground. When they drilled the second hole in the quarry site, it came out of the ground at, at very high rates of flow. So the aquifer was formed by the sinking of the island, permeable subaerial lavas, and capped by this soil layer, which is the weathered surface of the Mauna Kea lavas. Thank you. Mr. Nance, you just drew um, fresh water infiltrating the, the Mauna Loa lavas above it. How long would that continue if it occurred? It will continue until we come in and just use a different color. We come in and install casing inside the borehole and we cement the annular space between the casing and the drill borehole. That is likely to be a period of months because we will drill a 12 inch pilot borehole first, do a, do a pump test with an inflatable packer here so that we only pull water from here. And if that's successful, we'll open the hole up and then install the casing. Thank you. Yeah, I got one question. Okay, when you guys drill that hole in the beginning, right, and you guys get all the way down to the Mauna Kea aquifer. Yeah. What are the chances of it getting contaminated with the things that you guys are bringing down with the drill bit? And how do you guys plan or what is the method of containing the, the settlement from going down or being contaminated to the next aquifer? Well, this is coming up under pressure. So nothing is going to leak from the Mono Loa lavas this way. The flow is going to be out. The drilling itself, they use water, uh, and a little bit of foam, NSF approved, and that's what carries the cuttings out while they're drilling. So there, there really isn't a contamination uh, that's gonna go on, but there is this leakage. Uh, just as an aside, uh, we drilled a deep, or state drilled a deep hole in Keopu on the other side of the island, had no idea that they'd run into the situation, which they did. It was flowing out, uh, ground elevation there was 730, so the water didn't come all the way to the surface. We just sealed the leak last year. <laughs> and for 2001 to last year, three or 400 gallons a minute was coming out of the deep aquifer into the salt water and the basal groundwater below. That's in Keopu. Keopu. So the, the Mauna Kea Mauna Loa aquifer, is it flowing in, is continuously flowing into the ocean? Very good question. You'll take her thunder away. Um, two things about this groundwater we learned through the deep drilling process. One is they can trace using isotopic analysis where this recharge came from on Mauna Kea. And from that isotopic analysis, it's from a zone of about 6,000 to 6,500 foot elevation. So that's where it came from initially. The other thing that goes on here is that there's a tidal response. So in other words, that water is flowing through the aquifer and ultimately discharging at depth offshore. Thank you. If, did you? No, if there are no other questions, please continue. Thank you. I'd like to direct your attention back again to the aquifer map and, and make sure I understand it. So generally, if there is a well drilled in the Onomea aquifer system, 
that would also pump from the Mauna Kea lavas? Yes. Okay. And how about in the Hilo aquifer system? Are there, are there any wells there that pump from the Mauna Kea lavas? Any other wells? Not, not absolutely known, but up the Saddle Road, a well called Saddle Road Well A, which is a Department of Water Supply well, it's at a ground elevation of about 1900. And if this is the Saddle Road, and this is the well, this is the boundary. It was my design, oversaw construction, but we didn't have any weathered interface to tell us that we did or didn't. So I can't tell you whether Saddle Road Well A does that or stops and takes it out of Mauna Loa, but there's certainly the possibility that that's the case. <laughs>